Hey, it's Thursday morning. Can you believe it? This week is just flying by. It really is. The weekend's going to be here just a matter of hours. Hope you're having a good day so far. It's early yet here where I am, and uh, it's it's quiet, and uh, everyone else is asleep. And uh, got my coffee. Matter of fact, new coffee cup today. Um, thanks to Lorraine Boudreaux and Judy Dupree. This is a, a cool coffee cup. Grace is enough. His grace is enough. Even on the inside there, there's, there you go, more than enough. Thank you, Lorraine. Thank you, Judy Dupree. In the Bible, in the book of First Kings chapter 19, verse number 9. And he, Elijah the prophet, came thither into a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said unto him, So God said unto Elijah, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with a sword. And I, even I, this is Elijah talking now, I am the only one left, and they seek my life to take it away. And God said, go forth and stand up on the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break it in pieces. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance. And the Lord says, get up and get out of the cave. I've got some business for you to take care of. Just a few verses later, God tells Elijah, yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all knees which have not bowed unto Baal and every mouth which hath not kissed him. Elijah went to the cave. He traveled 40 days and 40 nights, and so he sought the cave for shelter. And so when we get into a cave by ourselves, we have a tendency to think that we're the only ones left. However, we're not the only ones. There are others that have been through what we're going through right now. Other people have been through what we're going through right now. And with the help of God, they made it through. They survived. I think this story, to me, it tells me that God isn't always in the wind. He isn't always in the fire. He isn't always in the earthquake. We got to get alone with God so we can hear his still small voice. Every single day that you get up, it's important to spend some quiet time with God so you can hear his still small voice. Constantly there's 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 voices and noises and and this going on and that going on and the latest news and and social media and and trials and problems and storms. Sometimes we got to stop it and get along with God. Matter of fact, we should do that on a regular basis. Find some quiet time with God every day so you can hear his voice. And if you'll hear his voice like Elijah, if you'll stop long enough and listen to God, he'll speak to you. God is not in competition with the lightning and the fire and, and the wind. He's not in competition with the other voices. If you want to focus on the other voices and the other noises going on around you, you know what? God will step back and let you hear all that and let you let, and let you deal with all that. But if you will step back yourself and get some quiet time with God, you're going to hear his voice. The Bible says, my sheep know my voice. And and he is the great shepherd. And so we got to do that. We got to get away with God and get some quiet time with him. And if we will, he'll give us some direction. And also he'll remind us that we're not the only one that's ever been through the storm. And it may look like everyone's forsaken God, but God reminds us that he has a church. He has a glorious people. He has some people that have not bowed, some people that still love him and revival is on the way. If you haven't already this morning, 
find yourself alone with God. Get some quiet time. Yeah, it's important to pray, and you, you pray by verbalizing and, and talking to God. But part of prayer, praying to God also, very much involves you being quiet and listening to the voice of God. If you listen to the voice for his voice, he'll speak to you, and he'll give you direction. He'll give you comfort, and he'll give you help for the day. God bless you so much. Thank you for listening today. Thank you for watching today. Have a great one, my friend. And don't forget, spend some quiet time with the Lord today. He wants to speak to you. He wants to give you direction today. He wants to bring you comfort and peace.